It is Friday the 8th of May 2020 and we had another week with bad jobs and the market soared. So uh, if it doesn't make sense, that doesn't matter. Only price pays. Let's take a look at the action. We have uh, here, of course, the market came down to its rising 20-day moving average and did find buyers there. Uh, it surprised me once again, but if I had a dollar for every time I was surprised by the market, I probably wouldn't have to trade. So we instead look at what the market tells us and react to that accordingly. We plan in advance, react when the price action tells us to, and then manage risk. On this daily time frame of the S&P 500, we have a clear pattern, and that is we have these highs, and one high is higher than the other. The other low is higher than the other low. So we have higher highs and higher lows. That's an uptrend. Where do we have the potential to run into resistance? Well, the next potential level is at 300 level. We've gone through every other uh, level that has been potential resistance. Well, I guess we're still uh, stuck below the 61.8% retracement. But again, we're actually right at it. This 200-day uh, moving average seems as though it might be a magnet. Let's look at the intraday action. Because this week, was uh, we, you know, we started with a gap lower. And here is our week-to-date volume weighted average. I'm sorry. Sorry, that's the month to date volume weighted average price there. The black is the week to date. We see that we did hold above the month to date volume weighted average price here on a uh, closing basis. So that's a good thing and we'll keep that level in mind at about 285. But even here, we, you know, we recovered back up above that five day moving average and created a pattern of higher highs and higher lows. You simply can't fight price action unless you're willing to lose all of your money, which I'm not willing to do. I'm willing to change my mind when the market tells me to. I was looking at the uh, NASDAQ as potentially being able to break down, but of course it gapped higher here a couple days ago. And from that, we've seen the market make this pattern of higher highs and higher lows intraday as well uh, since that gap on Tuesday. So let's go back to the daily time frame here for the NASDAQ. It is positive year to date. It's still off of its uh, you know highs for the year, but again, it's positive year to date. And that's, uh, you know, not what people would expect. It's certainly not what I expect, especially, you know, up 6% year to date for the NASDAQ, 5.76%, whatever you want to call it. The fact is we have a strong market. And if you've been fighting it, then you're losing money. If you have held stocks through the decline and this rally, don't forget about how, how bad it felt over here. And if you're not willing to go through that again, then have some simple risk management in place. We have a simple pattern here as well. We have this high, we have a higher high and another higher high. We have this low and we have another higher low. Next week, perhaps we pull back but it's not going to be a downtrend until we see lower highs and lower lows. That's going to take a lot to get this market uh, back into a downtrend for the NASDAQ. If anything, maybe we start to see some correction through time, but we're not even seeing that. Instead, we're seeing that the NASDAQ closed right at the highs for the, uh, uh, for the, for the session and for this recovery. Russell 2000, let's just uh, flip back to the daily time frame for a moment. This was a prior level of resistance. It held a support here on uh, uh, Tuesday of this week. And that's also where we saw the 20 day moving average. The 20 day moving average is that blue moving average right there on this daily time frame. And now what do we have? We have a pattern where resistance becomes support. We have uh, this low, we have a higher low, we have this high and we have a higher high. It seems as though the most likely thing is for continued upside uh, to see another higher high here. The question is, does it make sense to enter a new position? Well, if we get a pullback into here and then we see that this prior little band of resistance from the uh, uh, volume weighted average price of the last peak, if that holds as support, then I think that you wanna be long maybe somewhere in here with a stop, of course, probably just below that five day moving average. Again, you know, no one's expecting this, has expected this market to do what it's doing. So we just continue to look at price action and adjust according to what price action tells us. The semiconductors, uh, again, a strong week uh, for here. We started out with a gap lower and it seemed as though maybe we were gonna co consolidate further. 
We came down to the volume weighted average price from the beginning of April. That's the second time that that level uh, has been important support. So we'll continue to look at that now at 128 as an important level. It's not important you know, next week most likely because we're so far away from it. Instead, what we look for is we'll switch from this 30 minute time frame over to a 15 minute time frame and maybe we see some kind of pullback towards the five day moving average and then a pattern of higher highs and higher lows continues. Biotech's right up at the top end of that range that we've seen recently. Uh, you can see that more clearly. I've been sketching it in each day for Alpha Trend subscribers on this 30 minute time frame. And you can see that this is the top end of that range, this 128 to 129 level. Uh, we had a shakeout uh, below the low end of this, and from that failed breakdown came a fast move higher. We're again at the top end of the range. We have a rising five day moving average. There's no reason to think that this thing's going to just break down. I think that, you know, you look at 126 and a half to 127 is the important level for next week. And perhaps we're still building energy for new all time highs, which when we look at the weekly time frame, you know, takes us back to the highs from 2015. They still look obtainable. Although, again, you know, the breakout that we you know, have been talking about for the last few weeks has really not progressed much. We saw the breakout, it was extended when it did that, and it's been digesting those gains through time. We had a price shakeout, now a time correction. The path of least resistance is higher. Don't chase and put your money at risk by buying when it's extended, but buying after short-term pullbacks. You know, if you see little pullbacks and you're looking to get involved, you buy as it moves higher from those because you don't want to buy the pullback. You don't know if it's going to continue to pull back. Uh, financials were the group that looked like they had the potential to kind of sink this market. I had been posting on Twitter that this is, you know, the range that we've been in for the financials and the volume weighted average price from the low was tested again this week. And if we were to have broken down below that 21 level, that it would have spelled disaster, I think, for the financials and the rest of the market. Well, we never broke below that. So let's take a look at actually a 65 minute time frame where we can fit all that data in. This green line is the volume weighted average price from the low. It's the average price paid since the low was made on March 23rd or so. Uh, this, you know, this has been the band of support near 21. If we had seen something like this occur, then I think we would have seen the market, you know, the overall market decline. Instead, the market found buyers here once again, and we're now back to the midpoint of this range. This is also where we see the volume weighted average price from that peak. So if these financials are going to continue to recover, maybe we see them pull back to the five day moving average, break above this little band of resistance, and then they could be buyable, uh, at least for a push up towards the top end of the range uh, with a stop under here. Let's look at the daily time frame again. That would get them up to 23 and a half, 24. Is that enough to recover? I, I mean, I, I certainly wouldn't want to be a buyer on a break of this high because it would be extended. Instead, this is why we use the shorter term time frames and create a scenario here. Again, maybe we pull back, find the buyers at the five day moving average, then push past this range. That could be the place to be a buyer. Don't wait for it to get up to 23.75. And you know, that's, that's another you know, 7% from here. Instead, learn to trade within the ranges if you're going to get bullish on these financials. If instead we break down, uh, let's again go back to that 65 minute time frame. If we break down next week, we'll be aware that it does have the potential to uh, do bigger damage to this market. Meanwhile, there's still a lot of great trades set up at Alpha Trends. We're along this SMAR, we're along work. We did get stopped out of SDGR today. Uh, Codex we got involved in. So again, there's a lot of good looking stocks out there. The trick is to buy them in a low risk position where you can put your stop that if you're wrong, you're gonna have a small loss, but there's still sufficient upside to trade that plan based on what the market's telling you on an individual stock basis. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you had a good week and uh, we'll talk to you again next week.